Hello everyone and uh, welcome to cloudnative.tv. Uh, we are live on uh, Search Magic with Siam and this is episode number three. So before we start, uh, so this is an official live stream of CNCF and as such is subject to CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that, of that code. Uh, basically, please be respectful uh, of all your fellow participants and presenters. Uh, so Search Magic with Sayam, actually Search Magic is a show where we talk all about Kubernetes certification, uh, CKA, CKA, CKS, and we uh, kind of go through some of the concepts, then do some of the problem solving and see how things work uh, overall. And uh, for the first episode, uh, we covered uh, the introduction to the certifications, so why the certifications are important, why they play an important role, and uh, why you should care about it. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty important, uh, and we covered all the like uh, all the building blocks of the certification, and the uh, preparation uh, material, like where you should be, you know, focusing on uh, where you should be getting the learning materials from, and all those stuff. Uh, in the next episode, uh, we had uh, the uh, we had Tim uh, from the Linux Foundation training team itself, uh, and we discussed about the Kubernetes architecture, the orchestration. What do you mean by orchestration? Kubernetes architecture, how it works, uh, what are the building blocks, uh, the scheduler, controller manager, ATCD, uh, what is a control plane, what is a, a node, and then on the node you have the kubectl, kubeproxy, CRI, CNI, CSI. So all these things uh, we we covered, and also. Uh, there was a deep dive on uh, demo on Kubernetes setup using Cryo. Uh, so if you have not watched, all these are uh, available on YouTube uh, as well as on Twitch. Uh, so you can just have a look at that. Today, uh, let's continue that journey and we'll be diving into more of the concepts. Um, uh, most importantly, the Kubernetes objects like the pods, deployments, replica sets, uh, how they work, uh, some of the scenarios uh in in the uh, from the certification point of view obviously we are focusing on that but i also want um, you to be you know uh, taking care of uh like how you can use it in your daily like day-to-day -day work life as well so we'll cover the concepts but uh we cover it in such a way that it helps you both organically in your uh work environment as well plus from the certifications perspective as well Okay, so that was the brief overview that I had for Search Magic, and let me share my screen. Just a second. In the meanwhile, uh, like uh, you can, you know, just tell where you are joining in from, and uh, you know, uh, keep sharing. Uh, so yes, we also have uh, two giveaways uh, for the session that I do. So make the stream more interactive. Now, since I'll be presenting, uh, so uh, I have to switch back back and forth between the tab, and that is the ad adjustment that I'm doing right now. Uh, so we have to switch between back and forth. Uh, so I, I'll be looking uh, at the comment section as well uh, of uh, for like what all things are there and how things are working. Awesome. Uh, so I have my equipment ready now. So make the session interactive and the two uh, two, two folks who have the most uh, you know interactive session uh, we will be doing a swag giveaway of a 50 percent discount voucher uh, for your what you call certification exam coupons so let me just air beam that air tv okay we are good now. Uh, 
and I'll share my screen very quickly. Awesome. So I hope you are able to see uh, the screen and let's cover some of the concepts. So I see a lot of people joining in. Uh, welcome everyone, Garish, uh, Sanskriti, uh, Wanshik, Yovan. So glad to have all of you over here. Please share this on Twitter as well because we are just getting started and uh, we'll cover tons of uh, you know good material over today, uh, to be honest, and we'll do the hands-on as well. So now uh, what we have is in Kubernetes, we have Kubernetes objects. So we have your pods, we have deployments, we have replica sets, we have stateful sets, daemon sets, and basically tons of other uh, Kubernetes objects as well. We have also have the concept of CRDs. Uh, so when, when you have the controller deployed uh, for the extend for extending Kubernetes, so you can create the custom resource object as well, which behaves in a similar manner. Like you'll be having the same four things, uh, API version, kind, spec, uh, metadata section. Uh, but these are the basic building blocks, uh, building blocks uh, which are very much necessary uh, for, for getting started at least. So the first or the smallest unit of uh, whatever you can call it or smallest unit or basically where your application actually runs your application runs uh, as a container within a pod so a pod will be the smallest unit so if you know from the previous stream uh, we have this node which is joined to the control plane so you have a control plane which is the main brain and then you have the node which is connected to the control plane it has obviously different components kubelet Q proxy, your CNI, which can be Docker, Cryo, or Container D. So we did uh, container, uh, we did Cryo setup, and today I'll be showing you not the setup, uh, but I have the gist which you can use readily. Uh, so, but it is Container D based, very simple. Uh, and then this is a pod. Well, let's expand this. So pod basically consists of one or more containers. C1, C2, C3, sharing the same network uh, namespace and uh, sharing the same uh, resources from within the same isolation of the pod. Uh, they can talk to each other on uh, local host. Uh, all these things are there. And uh, the pod is, uh, the, obviously the pod gets its own uh, IP, uh, whichever the CIDR range that you have given while setting up the cluster. And uh, then the uh, due to the uh, all the IP table rules that set up the support to pod uh, communication, node to node communication, those works. But those are part of the, what you call uh, the networking section. So today, just to give you the glimpse, we will be covering, uh, let me show you the curriculum, Kubernetes. CKA curriculum and we will be yeah the little one is obviously the trusted ones so CKA has one so it's loading yeah so we did cover uh, the architecture installation uh, some of the things of that uh, etcd backup restore We'll cover some some other day, but at least we know how to set up a basic, uh, you know, QBDM cluster and all that. Today we'll focus on more on the workload and the scheduling part, uh, and and see like how the how the deployments uh, and all things work, uh, how the scheduling takes place, uh, and all all those things. So with that, uh, let's let's keep continuing, uh, and we'll go to the section of pods. So we are talking about pods. And the first thing that we have is API version. And then we have the kind. And then we have the metadata. And you can have the, you know, a name, A, B, C. And then we have the spec section. And that we have the containers. And then we have the uh, image, which is Nginx. And then we have your what whatever the name name of the container is also can be uh, same or can be different. 
So why I am telling this is because uh, the three building blocks, the four building blocks, to be honest, are uh, in any of the YAML file uh, would be your API version, basically to which the the kind the object belongs to. So there there is V1, beta one, V1, alpha. So there are alpha features, beta features, and just the stable ones. So that's how the API version would go. Uh, so you need to uh, see that. Uh, and then if we have the kind, what actually uh, you want to create or what actually you want to tell the Cube API server to create and manage on its own. So if you create a deployment and you say like, I, I and you submit a request to create a deployment using the YAML file, uh, and then it will convert that into JSON object and then pass it on to the uh, uh, API server and then do, do the magic that it does. Uh, so even if you are doing the same by CDL, it, it you know, converts that to JSON and then passes to the uh, API server and then it does all the magic where uh, the scheduler will schedule the node based on the uh, request and the limit. We'll also talk about the request the resource request and resource limit, uh, which is actually very critical uh, and important uh, piece. And I will tell you exactly from where you have to learn this because uh, the, the documentation for that is really, really solid. And uh, after that, you have the metadata where you define the name, the labels and all those things, the annotations. Uh, the spec section is really the uh, actual piece where you define what exactly uh, is the character characteristics, like what exactly is the image uh, that you need. Uh, it can be obviously Nginx or it can be your custom image. So this is the application that you would want to run. Uh, so it can be, you know, or any of your images that, that you have dockerized or containerized, or it's just the OCI uh, compliant image uh, that you can run from here. It can be on, on GCR, it can be on GitHub, it can be on uh, whatever uh, the Docker ones. So you have specific container registry that you have set up for that and then the name and all those components obviously there are a lot of other things like you can specify a node not like this you can specify the node name you can specify uh, the node selector you can specify uh, uh, the resource request and the resource limit for this particular container uh, so there are tons of other things that you would be able to uh, specify as well so this was about the pod so Let's go into the next version because uh, usually in certificate, from, now let's uh, think from the certification perspective. Now from the search perspective, you might be asked to create a pod, very simple, right? Uh, to create a pod with specific label or with specific name or with specific name and a label in a specific namespace or maybe uh, a multi-container pod. So all these things can be uh, asked when you are in the exam, a very, very basic uh, kind of questions. So let's see that in action as well. So now I'll switch over to my terminal window. Obviously, I have to reshare the screen. Share screen. Cool. Now you are able to see the terminal window. So we have uh, cube serial get nodes. Awesome. So this is a 1.21 cluster with one master two nodes and uh, kubectl get nodes hyphen o wide. Uh, so basically hyphen o wide is the command uh, that you can get additional set of information on any of the resources. Uh, you can do it on pods, you can do it on services. It gives you additional fields uh, that, that you will be getting. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, how to get the specific values because those are very important from the certification point of view as well. Basically, people call it as a Kubernetes, uh, Kube CDL cheat sheet. So you can see uh, it has a, a lot of things like the uh, container run times uh, and it has container D. Uh, it has the, the OS, the internal IPs, uh, the kernel that is there, the OS image and uh, you know the status of that. So all these things are there when, when you are defining the node. Now, uh, when you are asked to create a pod, so in the certification exam, uh, the easiest way and the fastest way is to create via the kubectl command line itself because it saves you time. 
now i have told it multiple times uh, in the certification areas as well uh, you can you have to create i mean you have to take care of the time because the time runs out very fast sometimes there are there are few questions uh, because all questions are scenario based uh, so there there can be a long kind of question but it will be step i mean you don't have to be stuck in a particular question and you don't look at the clock because that i mean it happens all the time uh, so it has happened to me as well like uh, in a particular question i can spend a big chunk of my time i can actually waste a big chunk of my time which i could have used in solving other problems and come back later to this particular question and solve it uh, so don't do that uh, so take care of the time and uh, if if you are not able to uh, you know uh, see like what is happening then there are different tricks uh, that that you know uh, you can keep in mind like uh, if if i don't know anything then i can use i can do step a step b step c have a plan that is important aliases are completely your choice i have never used aliases in any of my certification exams and i have cleared all of them uh, but a lot of people uses them and they help you uh, a lot i'm not saying it doesn't help you but they are again totally optional and completely based on your choice so if you are like if you think uh, your like uh, you know kgp is way faster than kubectl will get pods then definitely set up the aliases first and use them it's pretty uh, simple uh, from from that uh, perspective so let's do kubectl run so let's say you have to run a pod so we'll run an nginx pod uh, and we'll give an image so hyphen hyphen image nginx you can define other attributes like port and all those things i'll show you that as well so you can see the pod is created now, if you do not define anything very simple, it will create that in the default namespace. You can see kubectl get ns. You have different set of namespaces already present over there. Uh, and you have uh, kubectl get pods would have been created in the default namespace. So you can see it's already in container creating means it is just pulling the image and getting uh, ready uh, for that. And there are some other pods as part of the deployments that I would have already uh, deployed onto the cluster. Now, other thing, uh, if there are too many things uh, that uh, you have to apply on to, I mean, you have to customize like a multi-container pod, a very good example, kubectl uh, run um, example pod, hyphen hyphen image is equal to maybe let's say we have we have to create a pod with a multi-container pod with two images uh, so we'll be using nginx and then hyphen o yaml then hyphen hyphen dry run is equal to i think client So this gives you a YAML file. Now you can put that in a multi mc.yaml. So basically you immediately get the sample of the uh, YAML file. So some of the things that you can immediately, you know, uh, do like if you want to run it with a specific label, definitely do that like color red, something like that. And maybe the pod, uh, maybe the container name has to be uh, important. And then resources, obviously you have to set some resource uh, limits and maybe you need to specify a uh, node name or maybe you need to schedule it on a specific node. Actually, I don't know any name of the specific node. So QCT will get nodes. So maybe you want to schedule that on node 3 so let's give the node name oops let's give the node name node 3 uh, so basically i'm com uh, combining a lot of questions uh, so i'm scheduling it on a specific node so that comes as a separate that can come as a separate problem like uh, schedule a node on a separate uh, on a, this particular node now in practical this can be very helpful uh, where you have your 
uh, specific workloads which are targeted for specific nodes and you want to uh, you know uh, specify that uh, on uh, you want to run that on a particular node it can happen all the time it can happen to different types of workload it can happen to different node sizes so basically i can have different node pools uh, in in my kubernetes cluster uh, so let's say i have different sizes of virtual machines um, uh, connected or if i take example of co kubernetes which is k3s based i create a cluster with different node pools in any of the cloud providers there will be different node pools uh, so i add a, a, a small node pool first and of, of three nodes then i add another uh, node pool of maybe larger sizes of three nodes uh, so i can actually uh, do based on two things one can be uh, the node selector so let me show you that uh, i think i have to share my complete screen else i have to switch back and forth so anyways what i'll do is uh, i'll open that node selector stuff and first i'll finish this and then i'll move to the theory section again uh, also we were talking about a multi-container pod so let's have that over here image maybe i'll maybe whatever redis something like that anything anything and uh, it can have a name redis and it, yeah that's it actually so let's have this and um, cube cdl apply mc oh, cube cdl this can happen so that's why if you want to use the shortcuts use them cube cdl get pods so you can see the example pod is getting created and now there is a difference in numbers over here uh, so now you you get to know another concepts like if there are different uh, multiple containers inside a pod uh, it will be showing as uh, here so one out of one means one out of one container from that pod is ready or running uh, now zero out of two means zero out of the two containers defined in the pod specification is not ready or not running so that's why it is in container creating state so there are obviously different pod states uh, container creating uh, then you're running then, then uh, your uh, crash loop back off error and all those states which are there so completed uh, so all these things are there uh, and there is a concept of init containers as well which we can look at So I hope you're getting concept actually. Uh, so both of them are running. So let's see kubectl describe for example. You can see uh, first it successful built in the next. Uh, it uh, created the container important, started the container important. Next it started pulling the image Redis, successfully pulled it, created the container Redis and started that. And above also you can see uh, both of the uh, containers are there. So you have one container with container ID this, another one Nginx is running with container ID this. Uh, so you can see you have a multi-container pod running on a specific node, which is demo3. So we actually specified the node name, which is demo3. So it actually ran on that particular node itself. Uh, so we have, uh, and the labels for that particular pod is color, is equal to red so you can see we specified a specific label we assigned so you can write it down actually what all things we did uh, on the on the recap section uh, so we created a pod we created a pod in default namespace uh, we created a pod with two containers so it's a multi container pod we assigned the pod to a specific node we created a pod with a specific label and what else yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it that we did till now. But that covers a lot of questions actually, uh, if, if you are doing. So you can create your own cheat sheet and, and you can you know practice that very fast. Like how to create a multi container pod, do a dry run, get the YAML file, edit that and uh, do it. So let me just check if any questions are there. I haven't been here, okay. I'm just going up. 
So we have a high low container as the container run, run time. Docker container runner can be used. Docker container respective to the container runtime. So basically, uh, there are questions on CRI, and I think I don't know whether it's then CKA. I can't remember recall that, but they can be in CKS, I believe. Uh, so uh, we have to check, but it's okay. In the end, the the CRI's part will be you know or to, to put, for pulling the image and running and all those stuff. But uh, even if you have container D, uh, the the commands for kubectl creating the deployment pods, replica set, services would remain the same. So I don't think there, there will be any change. Uh, and what else are there? Uh, yeah, there are resource limits, which we'll be talking about. You can set resource quota, yes, on the on the pods and the name namespaces as well. Yeah, there are different ways. Like uh, you can set the aliases yourself, and then you know you can do all sorts of stuff. So that's completely on you. How important is it to set WIMRC? Mm, I have never said that, so it's it's completely optional, up to you. What is the difference between node name and node selector? So node selector will basically be based on uh, the labels uh, and node name would be exactly specifying which node it is going to. You can have like, uh, like I told you, you, have, you can have a multiple, you can have a node pool of large size with specific labels. So you can specify like uh, your workload can go to any of the large size nodes, then you can use node selector easily. And what else is there? Uh, can you explain the pod lifecycle? I think I explained some part of that. Uh, you have different, like, uh, how, how the pod is actually running. And can two containers in a pod expose on the same port? The port obviously would be uh, not the same for both the containers because they are like local host. So you can think of like you have a local laptop and you're running multiple services. If you run by a Docker, you won't be running. You won't be able to run two same services on port 80. There'll be a conflict as simple as that. Now let me switch back to what I was telling you, the node selector one, which is a good point as well. Where we are, stop screen. You have to see my happy face again. Share screen, window, assigning pods, share. So as you can see, uh, assigning pod to nodes. Uh, this is basically, I can share the link as well if you like. So assigning pod to nodes, very simple. You can use either node selector and uh, attach the label to the node. So basically node selectors will be having like this node selector disk type SSD and this particular label would be on the node. So any node having the disk type SSD would be the one uh, that will be scheduled, that the scheduler will schedule this particular pod to. And uh, then you have like affinity and T affinity is something which is not something uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think it's part of the certification criteria uh, but yeah theory wise uh, it's, it's very uh, you know it can be uh, useful in in some ways so it's basically to provide a, a node selector very simply you can do so anti affinity and affinity is is a you know expansion of the type of constraints that you can uh, have so you can have logical operations uh, on 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 the uh, nodes of it with the node selector so if we go over here so you can see you can see you can have affinity then you can have node affinity now there are different things like required during scheduling ignore during execution so all these things are very deeply explained in in this particular uh you know uh, talk which you can go through we'll not cover that so inter affinity and anti affinity uh so that the pod do not go to specific nodes all these things are there match expressions so you can do that so the, uh, these are called the constraints 
and uh, so these are the practical use cases that that uh, some of them have given uh, the documentation states it's very very well so that's what i was telling uh, there are courses on on kubernetes uh, which i have already told you uh, which are there uh, that you can study from uh, the paid or the free ones uh, but the kubernetes documentation is the single source for your the single source of truth for you because the kubernetes documentation is superb uh, it explains the concept in depth and it has a lot of great examples like you know you have a complete deployment with affinity pod affinity and node affinity so you can see it's a pod affinity above was the i think node node affinity or it's pod affinity only let me check yeah this one should be the node affinity so you will be having those then on the down you will be having another thing which i just showed the demo for which is node name so basically it's the simplest form of the node selection where you you are not setting some of the constraints you are not setting labels you exactly know okay there is a node xyz which i want my this particular workload to schedule to then you can uh you know schedule to that particular node and yeah obviously there are some limitations to that which you have to take care yep that's pretty much it with respect to you know uh the kind of scheduling that you can work so yes this comes under uh scheduling then we i wanted to tell you another thing which is called yeah uh, managing resources for the containers someone asked that in the questions as well and we'll explain it um uh, in the form of uh, you know kind of working writing as well so in the uh, in the uh, what you call managing resource for the containers what we have is we'll go over here oops i have to connect again just give me a second let me reload that Cool. Uh, it should be visible now. Yep. So that screen should be visible now. So uh, basically, uh, we have the uh, managing resources for the container. So when you specify the the pod, the pod spec, in that you can optionally specify uh, the the resources uh, that are required for the uh, container. Obviously, the CPU and the memory so these are the resources that you can uh, specify sorry specify now comes the concept of uh, requests plus limits so you can specify how much the container has to request so how much the container has to request uh so let's say like you specify uh some some memory uh in in the uh request that a container needs let's say one gig of ram or one gig of memory so it will request for that but uh if you do not specify the limit now you have to understand like resource request and resource limit resource request and resource limit so uh, the, the resource request and the resource limit so you have one gb one gig of ram that you have uh, specified uh, for the memory now uh, the first of all the, the scheduler will uh, schedule it on the node which has enough capacity uh, so obviously if it will not schedule on a resource where the memory left is less than one gig so it won't schedule on that so it will schedule on the on the uh, node which has which can cater this particular use case uh, so that will be uh, there now if you do not enforce this particular part which is called the limit what uh, this can do is obviously it minimum it will require one gigs and if this particular node where it is getting scheduled to is say eight gigs 
then it can consume more because it has available memory so it can consume uh, more so if if something is not there then it can definitely consume uh, more so in this uh, so where you can define that we went over here so you can see we have pod we have the pod spec section and in the pod spec section uh, we had containers and i showed you like there was a section called inside the containers resources and the resources were like this when we created the yaml file now in this it will be expanded uh, where you will we'll be uh, specifying uh, like uh, the uh, request for cpu and uh, memory and we'll be specifying the limit for cpu and memory now we can force enforce the limit as well like it should not go beyond this and request it can request for uh, this so you can specify in the uh, spec section of the container so that's that's how you will be able to uh, specify uh, now let's go back to actual resources and let's see one example over here yeah now here you can see uh, a pod is there and it is also multi container pod and you can see that uh, this particular container from the pod is in the resource then requests and then we have resource limits so resource request resource limit you have to specify both and you, spe you have to you can specify the memory and cpu so minimum 64 uh memory and cpu 250 uh and the memory will be uh, 128 the the limits and the cpu is 500 so do not go beyond that so that's how it is uh you know uh getting that and also it is it's like saying how the pod is scheduled obviously each node has maximum capacity and it uh it should you ensures for each resource sum of resource request for the scheduled container is less than the capacity of the nodes obviously the sum of the containers from a pod uh, for the request section should be less than the capacity of the node then only the node will be able to run that particular amount of requested cpu and memory for that particular uh, containers in the pod so very nicely written uh, so that's why the documentation is uh, your single source of truth uh, it is explaining very clearly with the help of the examples as well uh, how you can use that so that was the part of node uh, selector and all that one last thing that we'll cover today is uh, is the deployments part which is very important and we'll also cover uh, one, one very cool again like we covered five six scenarios in single example we'll again cover five six scenarios in single example with respect to deployment so like pods we have deployments now deployments again are the kubernetes is the kubernetes objects so obviously you can visit the documentation for deployments <coughs> sorry so you can go to the deployments and you can see like the use cases and all these things so creating a deployment very simple uh, yeah by the way in uh, in your exam certification exam you have uh, what you call kubernetes documentation allowed so make sure you use it very wisely because sometimes uh, like uh, especially for the cases like persistent volume persistent volume claims where you cannot create them directly via the kubectl imperative command line way you can directly search for some of the things you can search for actually a lot of things which you will directly get a pod spec from here and you can just edit and modify some of the fields and immediately apply that sometimes this way is much faster than the imperative way so in this particular case so basically deployments is a declarative way for pods and replica sets you can describe the desired state of the deployment and uh, uh, in in previous session we talked about the deployment controller that takes care of the deployments uh, and it creates the replica sets and uh, make sure that you have all the time specified number of replicas running so that is taken care by the uh, deployment so that is kind of the 
uh, power of Kubernetes that you are trying to use. You are trying to use the deployment controller that ensuring that, uh, hey, Kubernetes, I want minimum three replicas for my application so that if any of my, uh, like if my traffic is uh, more, I can pre-handle that. So I know like uh, uh, traffic to my pod, uh, traffic to my application will be more. So I can have more number of replicas. I can have 10 number of replicas. Uh, and there are different ways of, you know, there, there are auto scalers, uh, horizontal pod auto scalers, HPA, VPAs uh, that can based on the certain metrics can also auto scale your deployments. Uh, so you can have those as well implemented on later stage. But the first building block would be to create a deployment and set a desired minimum number of replicas. So in this particular case, there will be minimum three replicas all, all the times running. Uh, so, so you have the deployment, it will create a replica set and you will be having minimum number of uh, deployments. Sorry, minimum number of pods as defined in the replicas which will be running. So if you define three, it will be running three. You will be, uh, so now the questions. So you can be asked, uh, create XYZ deployment in ABC namespace, then uh, with a certain image, then change that image. Uh, then uh, you scale the deployment, uh, what else can be there? You scale the deployment, uh, you you see the status of the deployment, you can see the status, you can uh, record kind of the deployment so that you can do a rollback. So you can do a rollback as well. So if, if the image that you have specified is not right, so you can immediately roll back the image as well. That's also one of the cases that uh, I mean, one of the scenarios that can be asked in with, with respect to the exam. And these are some of the cases that that you can tie with your day to day life as well. Obviously, you 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 see like if you update a particular image and that is wrong or that is not working. So you can immediately roll back to the previous one uh, for, for the deployment. So that can be there. Uh, there are different deployment strategy, rolling uh, rolling update is there. Uh, and I think this is the default one. And uh, what else can be there for the deployment? I think that's that's all in all very, very summarized way of what deployment uh, questions can be on. Obviously there can be others, uh, but for now uh, we will do this. So we have a deployment and all those things. Yep. Okay, let's uh, do that. So of all the commands are actually there updating a deployment. Uh, so you can, you know, uh, set the image and uh, you can do that. We will we'll be using the same, uh, all the same things. We'll be using exactly same scenarios uh, for setting the image and doing all those stuff. So let's go back to the terminal. And oh, I think I'm not sharing the right screen. Okay. Anyways, I didn't type much, so got on, got it early on. Let me. share the right one actually i do not want to share the entire desktop so that's why you have to see my happy face again and again let me share the terminal window uh, i want to share a very interesting thing with you as well you know when when i'm talking like this i suddenly get something which i feel like you know i should be sharing or sharing it with you and then it is like okay uh, I'll, I'll share after the uh, this particular demo part so things are going back and forth but it's okay so we already have kubectl get deploy uh, i'll just delete that kubectl delete 
Deploy Nginx. Okay. What we'll do is, obviously, you can do a uh, CTL create. So deployment can be created using the kubectl create imperative command. If you just press enter, you will be given a lot of awesome options and you'll be given a demo uh, commands as well. Like, okay, let me do kubectl create deploy. And you'll be given something maybe, I can even help. So you can see usage kubectl create deployment give the deployment name give the image name and some of the commands now these some of the commands uh, and the options can be uh, like the uh, port the replicas uh, and uh, the output like if you want the output as a you know on uh, the whatever file it is and then you can have the dry run obviously uh, you can have the dry run client and get the, the copy of the YAML like we did. So let's do that first. So kubectl run uh, index uh, hyphen hyphen image is equal to, oh, sorry, not this one. My bad. kubectl create deployment nginx hyphen hyphen image is equal to nginx hyphen hyphen dry run uh, client hyphen o YAML one hyphen is missing as always something has to be missing so again it gives me a raw yaml so again if if there are some of the scenarios where you need to uh edit the yaml file as per the question instructions as per the scenario instruction you can quickly get this yaml file uh store that uh you know uh, just do this in a dp.yaml and we can do the dp.yaml edit. So if we can do the Vim uh, BI of that, we can maybe set the number of replicas to two and, oh, sorry, number of replicas to two. We can change the, uh, you know, the spec, the container name to Nginx2 or something like that. So anything can be, you know, uh, there that you can that we can change and the strategy we can apply a specific strategy and what else we can also specify again the resource section is empty but we can specify the resource and the limits over there as well so let's uh, uh, so let's create that actually and we'll remove all these create deployment in the next image in the next so let's press enter yes so we have successfully uh, created the uh, deployment with image nginx uh, obviously we can uh, change the image so that yeah next question is like i want to change the image so let me clear the screen kubectl get deploy so we can see uh, nginx deployment is there so basically uh, we can set the image for that a very easy command is there yep kubectl set image uh, for the deployment in Nginx and from Nginx to Nginx 1.18 so you can see the image is updated I should have actually shown you the previous one as well we can describe we can describe yeah you can see uh, the deployment controller uh, you know uh, scaled up and scaled down because it is now you know uh, doing the uh, changing the image so the latest image is getting changed to uh, what you call uh, 1.18 so that is there now this command uh, is already done we, we should not do that so what we can do is yeah scaling so next part was scaling so kubectl uh, scale deployment uh, engine x to replicas maybe three before that, kubectl get pods. So you can see we have 55 seconds ago just one Nginx pod running for that deployment. Now we are just making it three. And we'll do kubectl get pods again. And you can see two more new pods are there. Actually, we can so we can do kubectl 
rollout status deploy in the next so you can see so this is to check whether the uh, deployment is successfully rolled out uh, becomes very handy in some some automation stuff we keep checking the rollout and then we can move on to the next step something like that so if i go back and do get pods i'll be seeing all the pods are in running state uh, so we created the deployment we scaled that we changed the image uh, yeah we can record that so let's change the image actually to 1.19 and hyphen hyphen record and uh, if now i describe we can see the image is changed to 1.19 and this is how it does uh, it, it it is being done and uh, now we can actually see kubectl rollout history deployment uh, in the next so you can see uh, it is this and now let's do kubectl back is it uh, let me see what was the edge yeah, it's undo deployment so let's roll out so we can do actually the uh, rollback by doing the by undoing the deployment so let's do kubectl get deploy and kubectl describe deploy just to show you that uh, it is being changed back to 1.18 so these are some of the scenarios that can be there in the exam as well and these are some of the scenarios that can be helpful for you in in your day-to-day -day activities as well so you can have all these uh things so scaling up scaling down is is very uh you know very common and uh when implemented with horizon or auto scaler uh you can have that and obviously yeah you can also do one thing which is called kubectl get pods so you can actually kubectl expose and if i just click sorry kubectl expose pod and hyphen hyphen help so you can actually provide hyphen hyphen help and it will give you some of the commands uh, which are very handy so you can see this uh, create a service for a valid pod so kubectl expose pod with a valid name and then you give the uh, what you call a port number and you can also give like uh, uh, with a name front end or just like uh, without any name and you can also specify the type you can specify the protocol uh, so let's do like what pods we have let's do one quickly get okay, pods we have five minutes kubectl get pods come on kubectl there's one let's take this one expose expose pod into the x iphone iphone type there are different types of services we'll cover someday node port by default it's cluster ip uh iphone iphone port it kubectl get svc and you can see how uh, oh, my internet port on port 3103107 so kubectl get node cyber wide now i can take any of the uh ips obviously external ips uh are right now not displayed because uh, uh, i have not done that particular portion but yeah these are some of the uh things that we have uh, done by setting up the cluster which i'll just show you how to do that very 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 quickly come on clear so we have done today pods we have done today oh, sorry we have done today pods yeah, let me go and switch back again once again but let me see if i have my air beam still alive i think it's again gone Yep, uh, let me just share back quickly. Stop share, happy face, share back. And we share this particular screen. 
Yep. So uh, we have done Kubernetes objects, we have done pods, we have done deployments, uh, and we have seen like creating them, editing them, multi-container pods, uh, the uh, rolling them out uh, and scaling them, status, record, rollback, changing the image, and editing the YAML file. What are the resource and the request that you can specify in the resource section of the containers? Uh, what are the node names? Uh, scheduling them on a specific node based on node name, uh, node select right order the theory wise. Uh, so all these things we have done. Very quickly, uh, just have a look at this particular gist. So I created uh, this particular gist to set up Kubernetes on uh, basically these are the three nodes which are there so i created three instances compute instances on sibo uh, uh, so i asked platform and then i have just done this where i have set obviously the container d because i told you it is container d based and then the swap of fstb uh, fstab and then we have all the uh, fancy stuff for setting up kubelet kubeadm and kubectl and holding them and then yeah this is not required so you do this after that we obviously do kubeadm in it and specify the cidr range and uh, boom after that we do all the steps uh, that are defined in the output of the kubeadm command and then we uh, join the particular join the respective nodes so that's pretty much it uh, let me go to the chat and I think we have I don't think it was echoing. Yeah, let me go back to this. Yeah. In the exam question for particular node, should we go for node name or NT affinity? Exactly depends really what the question is and uh, obviously the weightage as well. Uh, I I would personally like if it's very straightforward that this has to be scheduled on node this uh, why not go for node name uh, it's it's very simple and uh, yeah labels can be there to you know uh, just change all sorts of stuff then no definitely has to report life cycle for scheduling yes you give a good hint okay there are two rolling something in place deployments recreate rolling update okay there's a good conversation that is going on between us, us Maftab, i don't know the name and girish uh both of them so which is pretty good yeah we okay i'll cover max surge and max unavailability sometime for sure but yeah i think it's already uh answered that uh, you are asking the link for the gist let me first see if it is public one I think it's public only. I never made it the other way. Anyways, this is the command. And yeah, I use this particular platform. So CBO, obviously CBO is where I work. So you can sign up or you can log in and you'll be getting the free credits as well. Uh, yep, that's pretty much it. If you want actually, uh, you know, a more on the deep dive stuff, uh, for some of the you know cloud native technologies then obviously uh, I have my own YouTube channel as well uh, so you can go to sayampata.com slash YouTube uh, where I stream about the cloud native technologies uh, which obviously relate the Kubernetes stuff uh, a lot of things are over there if you go to deep dive sessions uh, this particular yeah, there was a question last time like I, I should cover more other of the cloud native things but uh, this particular streaming is only focused to search magic only the certification stuff so we'll be doing cloud native uh, i do cloud native on my channel you can subscribe to that and you know uh, a lot of that stuff but you should definitely follow cloud native.tv awesome shows are there and awesome cloud native folks uh, the ambassadors the cloud native community they have come together and put down a lot of great schedule for that and a lot of great shows are coming up uh, and there are also sticker packs available on store.cncf.io that you can uh, check that. Uh, so yeah, very, very good question. Uh, so is there something that can be done on CKS? So I am doing something on CKS very soon. So let's take webinar CKS. Okay, it's, I have to enter my name as well, I think then. 
Yep. Uh, so this is the webinar and it's on 12th of July, uh, 22nd of July, sorry, uh, where I'll be talking all about CKS preparation and uh, uh, I'll be sharing a lot of things uh, that as well. I can share the link of that. It's okay. So just keep an eye. Uh, yeah, you can actually follow me on Twitter uh, because that's where I'll tell you, I'll be keep on, you know, telling about all the certification things I will do at different places. Obviously, at some point, we'll be covering CKS uh, on Search Magic as well, but not very immediately because we are trying to go step by step so that uh, people who want, uh, I want people to, you know, to get the knowledge for, for kind of free and uh, get them, uh, you know, the right set of track. So if you just want, uh, that sort of thing you can just watch episode one episode two and this is con in continuation episode three and next one will be based on other sets uh, maybe services maybe networking i don't know i haven't decided that but uh, we will choose some of the topics and we'll discuss on that so that's how it goes we'll try to keep them independent so previous topic was pre absolutely independent uh, if you if you have the kubernetes setup you can skip that uh, if you know about ports and deployments you can skip this one so i'll try i'll try to make those independent uh and, and we'll continue like that and for the winners uh let's see uh, who were the most active in the chats so i think uh girish has been active since very beginning so girish is one of the winners for the swag uh so girish please do reach out to me on github oh sorry uh, on twitter so that uh, i can give you the coupon and uh, let me know the let me see the second one i think uh us usmaf usmaf tab uh 1995 has answered the questions really well and uh, kept it more interactive so first of all thank you for answering and yeah uh, usma so uh, thank you for answering and you are the second winner uh, so congratulations to uh girish and uh usma uh, please reach out to me on twitter my dms are open i'll let you uh, i'll give you the coupon code 50 percent off coupon code on certifications and uh hope that uh, you know uh, you get certified soon and hope you like the session please share that uh, so that people can join again so this is a bi-weekly uh, on thursdays 8 30 pm ist or 8 a.m pt uh, that will be continuing uh, thank you so much for tuning in folks uh, i really liked interacting with you all and explaining some of the community stuff that i like in simple terms i hope you liked it uh, please do uh, let me know how things are going and uh, what else you would like to see uh, you can just tag me on twitter and, and tell me and uh, yeah please let me know uh, uh, you know the good things as well like what you really liked about the session uh, thank you all and uh, please follow Cloud Native TV and enjoy the awesome other shows. Bye.